Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation. Why do I call this interesting? Because I came up with the problem? No. Actually, that was a joke. I like this problem. Uh, it's, I think, interesting because we don't have a standard equation like sine 2x equals sine x. That would be very standard, right, don't you think? Or something like sine 3x equals sine of x minus 45. Okay. How, and plus, we're not solving for x here. We're trying to find cosine of x given that tangent of 2x is equal to sine x. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. So I'm going to write tangent 2x as, as you know, we have an expression for it, right? 2 tangent x divided by 1 minus tangent squared. So you can kind of go off of that route, but that's not what I'm going to do. I would like to write tangent 2x as sine 2x over cosine 2x. I got to pay attention to a couple of facts here. First of all, I need to make sure that cosine of 2x does not equal 0 because I don't want this to be undefined, obviously. And then set it equal to sine x. Now, in an equation, you don't want to cancel out things because you may lose roots, but rather you should put everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and do it. Sine 2x over cosine 2x minus sine x is equal to 0. And we're going to be solving this equation, uh, not necessarily for x, but from here we need to find cosine of x. Let's see how we can do it. I want to make a common denominator. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you do, you're going to get sine x multiplied by cosine of 2x, and all of that is divided by cosine of 2x, and that is equal to 0. Now, at this point, I can kind of get rid of the denominator, provided that cosine 2x does not equal 0. If it doesn't equal 0, it shouldn't then I can safely say that the numerator, which is sine 2x minus sine x cosine 2x, is equal to 0. Because if the numerator is 0, then the fraction is 0, as long as the denominator is not 0. Okay, so I always have to keep in mind that cosine 2x should never be 0. All right, now, let's see what happens here. I have sine 2x, I have sine x, and cosine 2x. What would you like to do? I have two double angles. I don't want to go with the cosine 2x because sine 2x need to be expanded. So I'm going to do that. Replace sine 2x with 2 sine x cosine x. And then hopefully you'll see what I see. Do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. This is equal to 0. Now notice that I have a common factor. So why not factor it? Take out sine x. And then you'll get 2 cosine x minus cosine of 2x. And at this point, you can safely say, well, cosine 2x is not the same as 2 cosine x, so they're not equal. But in this case, they are equal. But in general, they're not. So this gives us two possibilities. Either sine x is equal to 0, or 2 cosine x is equal to cosine 2x. Great. What does... Uh, what happens if sine x is equal to 0? i got to think about it. Okay. Well, we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1 all the time, right? This is always, always true. If sine x is 0, that means cosine squared x is equal to 1. And that gives us two solutions. Now, remember, our goal is not to solve for x, but to find cosine of x. And we kind of found it because from here, we can safely say that cosine x is either 1 or negative 1. So those are two possible solutions for cosine of x. Are there any other solutions? Let's see if we get anything from here. Since we have cosines on both sides and the right-hand side is a double angle, why don't we use the double angle formula? So the double angle formula gives us the following. And of course, there's three versions of cosine of 2x. I want to use the one that contains cosine x only, which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. These formulas are very easy to come up with. For example, if you think about the sum formula for cosine, cosine alpha plus beta, replace alpha and beta with x, and you get the formula for cosine of 2x. And then using the Pythagorean identities, which is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, you can come up with the other two formulas. This is one of the formulas for cosine of 2x. And what is so cool about it is that this gives us something called a quadratic equation, but it is in cosine x. So we have to use substitution again, whether you like it or not, right? So cosine x, let's call that c. Makes sense, doesn't it? From here, you can write 2c squared minus 2c or not. Do you see what I see? 
Okay, I should use a B here, but that's okay. We get the following quadratic equation. And if you solve this using the quadratic formula, you should be getting two solutions, negative B plus minus the square root of B squared, which is four, minus four times two times negative one. That should give us a positive term. Four times two is equal to eight. Great. So from here, we should be getting N and divided by two A, which is four. So these are the cosine uh, X values, but let's go ahead and simplify this. Divide uh, from here, first of all, notice that we're getting 2 plus minus the square root of 12 over 4. And then this can be written as 2 plus minus 2 root 3 divided by 4. And obviously you can simplify this and write it as 1 plus minus root 3 over 2 by dividing both the top and the bottom by 2. Okay, great. This is in the simplest form. And what does this mean? This means you got the cosine x values in addition to the 1 and the negative 1. But are these values... Are these values valid? You have to check. Why? Because cosine of x, if cosine of x is equal to 1 plus root 3 over 2, or if cosine x is equal to 1 minus root 3 over 2, what happens? Now notice that root 3 is greater than 1. When you add it to 1, you get a sum that is greater than 2. When you divide it by 2, you get a quotient that is greater than 1. And this is not acceptable because cosine x, as you know, must be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. So cosine of any angle in the real world cannot be greater than 1. So this is not acceptable. So we are left with only one value for cosine of x, and that is going to be 1 minus root 3 over 2. What happened to the other values? Nothing. They are still here. So we can also say that a cosine x can be 1, or cosine x can be negative 1. All right, awesome. Now here's that million dollar question. Are these the only values? And in the real world, yes, because we didn't really find any other solutions. But do they all work? Are any of these solutions extraneous? How can you check? Like Because, well, let's take a look at what we did here. Did we square both sides? Did we, did we do anything like radical stuff? Well, one thing we have to check is we have to make sure that cosine of 2x does not equal 0. Well, how do you check that? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now. We can easily evaluate, uh, it shouldn't equal zero, I shouldn't write that. So cosine 2x does not equal zero, meaning that two cosine squared x minus one should not equal zero. This implies that cosine squared x should not equal one half. And that means cosine of x should not equal plus minus one over root two, or you can write it as root two over two. But any of these values do not match up with that. So we're basically good here. All these values are valid and good. But I want to show you something else. I graphed it for you. Let me go ahead and show you what the graph looks like. And what did I graph? For you, I graphed three functions, tangent 2x, sine x, and cosine x. Why? If you look at the blue graph and the red graph, you're going to see where they intersect. Like for example, here they intersect and they also intersect here and they also intersect here. At that point, at the point where tangent 2x and sine x intersect, I looked at the green function, which gives us the cosine value. So those y values that you get on the green graph are all the possible solutions. Here you get your positive one, here you get your negative one, and here you get your one minus root three over two. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. You know the schedule. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.